What's up guys? Hey, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to quickly dress a wound uh, with just kind of what's on hand in a garage should you ever need to. Uh, and uh, yeah, that way you can stay stoked. Uh, not, I love you. <laughs> Alright, well step one is be safe and don't injure yourself in the first place. Uh, but in this case, I was in a garage that is unfamiliar to me. This is my father-in-law's house and I was doing a project and, you know, kind of making do with the tools I could find instead of using the right tools and that's how I injured myself. But let's look at the project I was doing and I'll describe my injury before we open this baby up. Alright, so as you can guess from my username, I am a dad and one of the things I'm doing with my kids right now is a Pinewood Derby car, which you carve, everybody carves them out of the same block of wood and then you race them down a ramp. And so. I just got really creative because I'm an artist and was building a basically a model of my actual uh, car, which is a 67 Mustang that's a chop top and all this stuff. It's called the Punish Stang. You can see that in other videos, but Here's what I was doing, and those wheels are just mocked in. I decided I wanted my Pinewood Derby car to not have these wheels stick out, because that's lame, and I wanted good fitment. So I was I was basically gonna route this out. Now I couldn't find a router, but I found router bits. And then I found a drill, and I was like, all right, I'll just do it like this, okay? And it worked great on the front ones, but I think what happened was, because this one is so close to the edge, because rake, um, I was drilling like this, and as I'm spinning this, you can see it spins this way. One of these grabbed onto something and it hopped. And when it hopped the first time, yeah, I did this twice. The first time it cut me like right here on the knuckle and it was a big chunk. And the second time <laughs> I dressed that one, okay? And then, so that, then I had tape on it. And then it happened a second time, which is dumb. I thought I was being more careful. I thought I knew what caused it the first time I was wrong. What was what caused it was using this scary thing <laughs> improperly. Anyway, um, the second time it hopped and it was spinning a little faster and it caught me like up here, down here, and there was like, it was a mess. Now, here's the deal. When you first cut your finger, it doesn't matter if you're like cutting with a knife or your screwdriver goes through, whatever. When you first, first do it, it often doesn't bleed right away. And you, you know, in this case, I had fleshy bits hanging out and all this stuff, but for a few seconds, it's not gonna bleed. And so if you can apply pressure right away, that's a good thing and it will help your, your wound heal as well. So I basically, there was a fleshy bit sticking out and I immediately pushed it down. So you can kind of imagine what that looks like, or maybe you don't want to. And then I was like holding it and quickly looking around for something like this and I found, uh, this guy and so what I usually do <laughs> Usually I don't do this too often But when injured in the garage or I don't want to go inside and clean it right away if it's a, a lesser injury or if it's like this case um, I'll grab a little paper towel or like a shop towel those blue ones And I'll just tear off a section and then you know quickly slide it under the part that I'm holding just to give it a little bit of padding And that'll that'll then absorb some of the blood then take tape and actually electrical tape works really good um, <laughs> But in this case, I just had masking tape. Electrical tape's nice because it's more bendable. Uh, although in this case, since it's right on the knuckle, I don't want to be bending this because it's just going to open every time. So I just took this and quickly round it, wound it tight. And, I, and again, you want it to be tight because it's going to hold pressure on that wound. And you've already kind of sealed it up. So that's a good thing. Second time, you know, more parts cut open and same deal. I just quickly grabbed the tape and then just wrapped it tight. And you can see it was bleeding. And this was yesterday. Uh, I would recommend doing the next step, <laughs> which is actually cleaning it correctly right away. But this is a good field dressing if you need to, or if you're out in a place where, like, say you were work, you know, traveling and, you know, wrenching on your car on the side of the road and this happened, this would be a great way to take care of yourself. Um, so, yeah, let's go inside. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, so no promises about this next part and how gross it might be, but we're gonna see how good a job I did. And again, I really should have taken care of this yesterday, but I didn't. Um, so anyway, this was cool. My my dad had this stuff, and it's like this this dealy. 
Uh, it's nice to be able to throw that on there because I just wanted to add some pressure, which is again what made me not take care of it right away, but whatever. Um, so this is cool, it just kind of like, you pull it and then it sticks to itself. Okay, now fair warning, this might be gross uh, again, so look away if you need to. All right, now. That's another thing about the paper towel is that then it doesn't, the tape doesn't pull off and like reopen the wound in theory. But I can't promise that I did that on the second one. Yeah, there's blood. Look at it, it still looks fresh. Well, I don't know if that's good, but... Again, there's not really been getting air. It's kind of like when you have a band-aid on there for a long time. That's what we're going to do, though. Some Neosporin and a band-aid. We're going to disinfect this, but first I'm going to have to wash it, which sucks. It's all dented in, but my finger's not going to, like, wiggle off or anything. Um, it's just the way the tape was and then the pressure of the tape. Yeah, you can see that little dent right there. <laughs> what if this video turns into me immediately going to the emergency room? <laughs> then it won't be a tutorial at all. Okay. Oh, good. I think we're going to be all right. See the paper towel? Oh, I did put it to paper towel. That was the second time. Just missed a little bit. Okay. Now, I went this way the first time because there was a chunk here. Basically because the way it was spinning, that blade would hit it and then chunk off a piece, but then it was spinning at an angle so it wouldn't clear it all the way off, thank goodness. And it was a big flap, and so there's a big flap here and it looks like there's a good gouge there. I haven't really inspected it, like I said, I just kind of immediately put pressure on it and looked for a way to seal it up. The good thing is now I have bandages and, um, you know, real first aid supplies and like, what do you call it, Neosporin. I didn't have that when I was initially doing this. Okay. Paper tally bits. Okay. Let's just go around again. You know what I'm thinking for that last piece? I might peel it this way so I don't reopen that flap. All right. Dude, that looks totally reasonable. <laughs> I mean, except for the whole damaged finger. Okay, so that's actually, that's looking pretty good. I'm not gonna bend this much, but it looks like it sealed pretty good. And this one did too. It's a little bit at a weird angle, but I think that may be because of the dent in the tape. So, I hope there's not gunk under there. The part I'm not loving, well, whatever, is this whole next part. Dude, the finger, yeah, that's the way they're supposed to bend. Okay, good. I'm gonna rinse it off, and then we're gonna hit it with some soap, and we're gonna be using Peach Bellini <laughs> Gentle Foaming. I like gentle, that sounds good. And I'm gonna be gentle here. Okay, good. I just had to check that GoPro was on. What if it wasn't? I got this far. Okay. So it worked. Those of you looking to field dress your wounds. Now I hope you're not like, <laughs> I hope you're not in the middle of like an injury Googling right now. Cause I took my time kind of explaining this to be thorough. I'm more thinking like preventative knowledge. You know, another preventative knowledge would be throw some band-aids in and you know, first aid supplies in your toolbox, right? And I'm not, I don't mean that in an accusatory way. I'm saying I should do that at home. I don't do that. Okay. All right, let's see how that looks. Hey, better. I'd say it's gentle and foaming. Look at that, like I can even rub on it and it's not like reopening or bleeding. So that really worked. You know, and if you cut an artery or something, definitely call 911. But in this case, I could still move and bend my fingers so I felt good about it. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna try that off real quick. Now, let's hit it with some Neosporin or other antibacterial cream because I'm not sponsored by Neosporin. <laughs> by the way, if anybody wants to sponsor IB Dad, definitely let me know in the comments. <laughs> okay, that's funny, my fingers are still wet. Mm. Ow, ow, I just bent my finger. That didn't feel good, okay. Yeah, see, it's starting to break open a little bit. There we go. 
Oh, I'm kidding. This is super glue. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Now, one thing, not a lot of people necessarily know this. You don't want to squirt this right on there because you can keep bacteria on the end there. In theory, it'll kill it, but you don't want to be spreading that to the people. Um, so we're going to put it on my finger. And again, I just washed that finger. Same deal. And then, that was probably more than I needed. In fact, I know it was more than I needed. That's funny. I didn't think that through. Because I don't want to just plaster the finger or the, the band-aid won't stick. It's not just bad up here. I really thought, it's funny, it just looked bad because it like sprayed blood everywhere. Well, it didn't really because it just opened, but I mean, whatever. I just kind of panicked because it was like, I was in shock. I was like, ah, oh, that just happened. And then quick, just like did the right thing. Those of you who, you know, know my story, um, I have a brain tumor, it's inoperable, all that stuff. So I sometimes, you know, I have like dementia essentially. And sometimes I just, you know, just like a, you know, grandpas fall off ladders and stuff and start, you know, whatever. Just uh, not always as careful as I'd like to be. Just because I don't like slimy bits and I want the band-aid to be sticking. Okay. To be, let's take a look. This is nice. Look at, <laughs> look at how many different supplies they have. My my father-in-law was an athletic trainer for a long time, and so he's probably well versed in first aid bits. Okay. In fact, he probably would totally cringe. Well, he probably will totally cringe at this video. This video. Thanks, Dad, for watching. I know you are a great watcher of these videos. Okay. Oh, thanks for lending me your garage, too. I'll try to use it more responsibly. Okay, let's go. That looks really good, um, as far as the lineup goes. Um, good. It's too bad that's on my knuckle, but I'm going to show you a trick with that, too. Okay, uh, by the way, it's funny how gross videos get so many views. The, vi the view, or the one where I smashed my finger and had the big blood blister under it and then took a, f <laughs> took a flame and got a paper clip red hot so I could pop it through the thing. That one has like thousands and thousands of views. Okay, uh, I'll link to that right at the end of the video. Okay, um, I should make a playlist of like gross do-it-yourself like first aid video or whatever. Now, that's done. And so we're going to use this again because basically, and you could do this now with blue tape as well if you didn't have whatever this is. Um, but I liked the way it wasn't bending because it's right on the knuckle. And I know from experience doing this uh, that if you have a big cut on the knuckle, every time you bend it, it kind of reopens. And right now it sucks because I'm learning to play guitar and I, I can't. Uh, and then typing is a little weird. Thank goodness for phones where you use your thumbs, right? Um, my wife is like, I just really want you to be careful because, you know, with your health, you know, and your judgment, I just don't want you to get hurt, you know, like, I don't want you to start losing fingers. And I was like, well, if I lose three, I'll be permanently stoked. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to same thing, I'm going to wrap it in the same direction. Um, kind of the opposite of the injury in this case. Okay, and then basically you just want to pull this real tight. That seems to be the trick. And then you don't just like rip this off like duct tape, you got to cut it. So, we're going to use this sanitary <laughs> tool that I keep with me at all times. Cut that. Okay. <laughs> See? Like, that was all teetery. Like, I just threw it down like it's not... Okay. And then, let's wrap it tight. Boom! We are done! <laughs> okay, so, you guys, I hope that is helpful to you. Stay safe, and I hope this is helpful. I already said that. Everybody stay stoked.